Hey there, today we're making a gravel pad for an 8x12 shed. If you have a slope yard like I do here and thought about having a shed is impossible, this is the solution for your yard. And along with this project, I'm going to be sharing with you some lessons I learned so we help you. First, you need to pick the spot for your shed. It's mostly up to you, but there are few things to think about. You want it to be easy to get to for when you're building and for when you're using it. Also, it's best to put the shed on flat ground. That makes it much easier to build the pad and the shed itself. But if you have a yard sloped like mine, it's a bit tricky. And you see just how much work that adds up to the project. So we begin digging. It's pretty simple. Start on one side and dig like you're making stairs. Stepping up every 5 to 6 inches. Next, we dig the bottom side. Which is the easiest because there's less material to remove. And then we go into the right side slope, same way as before, and finishing it up, digging across the top. And after you've done your first pass at digging for your 4x6 boards, uh, we'll set up uh, better boards and then start framing. But I just want to walk you through the way I do things, and you may do a little different, but uh, this is how I suggest. You start at the lower spots and you make your way up. A good trick I learned is that you know these boards are five and a half inch uh, deep. So you kind of measure five and a half inches on your pick and then you start digging uh, upward, right? And as that five and a half inches clears the grab, the, the, the finish grade, you kind of know that you need to step up to another level of digging. Now we're gonna put up some better boards around and that's gonna help us guide where to place the lumber. And here's a little trick. If you go to the big box stores, you're gonna find uh, sprayed lumber like this on the uh, kind of clear section. Usually this means that these are 70 to 90% off and they're not the best lumber, but for better boards or scrap boards, this will do the job. To set up your better boards in string, I use three stakes on each corner and then I run one board on each side and use it to tie the string to it. The better boards and string at this point is just to make sure that my pad is square. So I won't worry too much about leveling the string and I'll use a four foot level instead. So now that we have our strings up and our better boards, we kind of know how much we need to remove to finalize our grading here. Um, I like to do this afterwards, as I said, because I don't want the string on the way as I'm heavy digging. The final digging is pretty easy. Uh, it's just right, little here, little there, trying to get it to line up with the strings. Then after cleaning up, we'll place about uh, one inch to two inches of gravel underneath. That's to help drainage. And we'll lay the four by six right on top of it. I'm going to start with the 14 foot section for this part, I have an 8 foot board that we attach to a 6 foot section later. When joining these boards, I make a notch on both ends and screw them together. This notch is 5 inches deep by half of the thickness of the board. One important thing to remember is that whenever you cut pressure treated lumber, you need to treat it again. The pressure treated lumber you buy at the store is only treated on the outside. To treat the lumber again, you need to apply some type of wood preservative. We'll bring in the second section and make sure it's level. Most likely, we're going to need to adjust this to make it level. Once it's level, we we'll add one leg screw to hold the two pieces together. Let's make sure that this stays in place. So we go back to the beginning and drill a 5 8 hole and drive a rebar into it holding it to the ground. We then drill a second hole right in the middle where the two boards meet. Same thing, driving a rebar through it. Last one, it stores the end. These three rebars should hold the board in place. So once you have your first 4 by 6 row ready, secured, and leveled, it's time to go and start moving upward. The way I do these, um, I go one at a time, one section at a time. So here, I measure this distance, and I pre-cut 
the first 4x6 that's gonna go and then we'll build up the second level the third level and so on and so forth uh, eventually you look something like this this is just dry fit I haven't secured it down just yet so we're gonna secure that together and then on the top level above I'm having one full section and some blocks underneath securing and then down here you're gonna see three full lengths of four by six holding up the pad together also I'm using these pink rebars to secure them together uh, these are very handy super light to work you can cut them with the sawzall pretty easy I'm having one on the smaller section followed by a couple on each end and the same thing up here now let's put it all together we'll begin with a smaller section and then moving on to the large piece to join this 4x6 boards I use 6 inch long leg screws on the ends and as we build up we'll keep checking for level and notice how I stagger the ends for stability to make sure that these first few rows don't move we anchor them down with rebars I put one right in the corner and then another one about four feet away I work on the top level next using a full eight foot section and then on the side I cut a small piece of 4 by 6 at a 45 degree angle. This way there are no sharp edges or trip over and also it adds a bit of charm. Now we do the same thing we did on the left side. Clear away any dirt and make sure we still level. Starting with the short piece on the bottom, screwing that together. Moving on to the second row. And before we put on the third row, we finish up the last row on the front. Now we're able to finish up the third row, putting up a full 10 foot piece on the side. And lastly, we go all the way to the back, finish it off that section and completing the framing. And now we have our framing complete. It came out pretty good. Uh, the only thing left here is to drive down these rebars. Originally, as you guys saw, I drove three rebars to hold the framing in place. And then I framed around. And what we're going to do is we're going to finish up with one in the back, two along each, each side over there, and then the three, just like we had it here originally. I ended up with three rebars that hit rock and wouldn't go all the way down. So I had to cut them off. And as long as the rebars go through all the boards, they should be holding the frame pretty well. Now let's talk about backfilling. I knew I would be bringing some material to even out the slope ground. It took me about 10 wheelbarrows of dirt from a pile I had nearby. When you're doing this, just think about whether it might be better to dig deeper into the ground so you don't have to bring as much dirt in or have to remove some dirt. Once you're done backfilling, try to compact the ground as best as you can. It's a good idea to rent a compactor. But if you can't, using a hand compactor might work for you. And we are almost there. Moving dirt, it's heavy work. And that's why we do these videos, to show you so you can make the decision whether you want to do this project or hire somebody. If you do want to do this project and you want additional help, check the description below. We're going to share with you the plans to build this 8x12 shed from the ground up, including the material list. And they'll help you save time and money when it's your turn to build a shed. I finished spreading and leveling the dirt. And then I put down a weed barrier. This is really important. Even though it costs some money up front, you save a lot of trouble in the long run because you won't have to worry about weeds growing through the gravel. It's time to get some gravel. 
you can use different kinds, but for this project, I suggest getting number 57 gravel. It's cheap and good for drainage. I recommend at least three inches of gravel. And for a project this big, it's about two tons. Just remember, the more gravel you have, the better it will be for drainage. This took two trips on my pickup to bring all the gravel in. If you want, you can ask to have it delivered. I suggest getting it delivered only after you're done framing the box. You don't want to be moving the gravel around. The last few things here is just level off the gravel and compact it down as much as possible. Building a gravel pad like this, it's a lot of work. I hope this video gave you an idea how much work is involved so you can make the decision for yourself whether you want to do it or hire it out. If you do want to do this project, I recommend checking the description below where I share more information on cost and material lists. Now that the pad is complete, it's time to build the shed. And if you want to see that next, check out this next video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.